Okay, so I have learned in the past, prep your beds, wait a few days, and then go ahead and plant the plants. And I did this, y'all. I did exactly that. But as soon as I got finished planting my plants, we still had someone who wanted to try me and they came in and you see the damage that they done. We direct seeded some sweet peas and you see how they just went in and did what they wanted to do. Now, I'm going to tell you up front, I'm apologizing to the possum. I'm apologizing to the raccoon because that's who I thought it was. But I want you to stick around because I found them in the act and I had to run them off. I, I caught them. I caught them and I know they'll be back and I know they're probably smelling the organic fertilizer, but let's go ahead and let's get started with our fall planting. Thank you all so much for stopping by today. So I'm going to turn around because I told you I wanted to take you all with me as we start to flip our beds for the fall season. And so we've got this bed all prepped up. But I wanted to tell you what I what I did this time that was just a little bit different because I noticed that when I prepped my beds and put uh, the slow release fertilizer in, we have a lot of animals that come and they dig and sometimes they mess up our plants. So what I did a few days prior is I went ahead and I pulled up everything. We had green beans in this area. I pulled those up. And then I went ahead and put a little bit of lime because our soil is very acidic. And then I also use some blood meal because we're going to be planting leafy greens. We're actually going to be planting collard greens in this bed. And so let me show you really quick uh, what I use for the leafy greens. I'm just going to pick it up and show you real quick. So we um, use this blood meal for this bed right here. Um, and then I just left it for a few days like I watered it in I left it because sometimes the smell it, it was not a pleasant smell So I think that is what draws the animals sometime Something did dig but not really deep But I just wanted to give them a few days to find out there's nothing here. There's nothing there I think the lime really helped um, Because lime kind of masked that smell so um, now we're ready to plant. So we got everything laid out. Um, over time, sometimes your raised beds may, um, the soil level may kind of decrease. So we just pretty much topped it off. We're gonna plant our collard greens in this area, but I'm gonna show you at the end what we're gonna put on it because we still have a little bit more hot weather coming. And then I want to try to just mitigate any, mitigate any type of pest that may think they want to start eating on my greens. Um, we wanna do that and we just wanna keep a check on it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this area planted up and then I'll come back and show you what we did um, in this area and what we're going to do until we get a little bit uh, cooler weather. It's cool, but I wanted to get it in the ground to go ahead and get it growing and established, but I would like it a little bit cooler. But until then, I'll show you what we're going to do. So make sure you stick around until the very end. So before I show you what we're going to do in just a second, I just wanted to share with you, we planted our Creole collars. These are Creole collars. We got these from Baker Creek. And then I'm going to walk around on the other side and show you what we direct sowed. So let's go ahead and walk around really quick. I went ahead and wet my soil. Y'all know I like to wet my soil very thoroughly before I actually plant. So that way when I direct sow, um, the seeds don't get dislodged. So if you can look really close, then we have some seeds here about one inch um, in depth. These are uh, dwarf gray sugar pea pod. So we're gonna plant these along the cattle panel. They only get about three feet tall, but that way they'll be able to climb up this cattle panel. And then as the Creole collards begin to grow, y'all know I love to do what's called leafing off. So as they grow, I take the outer leaves, I cook them and let the plant continue to grow. So those these will last us pretty much until spring they may slow down as um, the weather gets a little bit cooler and the um, 
daylight saving times you know as we lose light but they will still continue to grow so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead put my straw mulch down and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do to protect these seedlings um, just to make sure that we don't have any issues um, with our collards okay so we put our straw mulch down to basically help keep in the moisture help protect the soil around it and then we put out up our pop-up netting this is going to help me um, i'm going to make sure that i check every day just to check the small seedlings to make sure that we don't have any pests that are within the soil and then it's also going to protect like if um, things want to lay eggs and create pests so this is going to protect us until they get a little bit bigger now this worked out perfect because i'm going to walk over to the other side again it doesn't reach all the way over which is going to give our um, sugar peas enough room to be able to emerge from the soil and then um, germinate so we put two seeds per hole in here they're going to be able to climb up the cattle panel but this is what we're going to use as a protectant because our seedlings are still small we don't want anything to eat them and we don't want any um, uninvited pests but again i will check every day just to make sure that um, we don't have any issues so we'll make sure we have that as you see we already have our irrigation ran so that when i turn the sprinklers on in this zone um, i don't have to lift up this uh, netting right here it's going to go straight to the soil and hopefully in the next few weeks they will start getting bigger they'll start getting stronger so we can start to harvest off of the collard greens and i'll make sure that i keep you posted now this bed again all started from seeds i'm going to link the seed starting master class in the description so if you're wondering when you're supposed to start seeds for your particular zone this is a great course to get so you won't have any questions no matter if you move no matter what people say on the internet when they're starting their seeds you'll know when you're supposed to start your seeds your zone your area okay so i didn't have my phone at the time but let me tell you caught him in the act the neighborhood gray stray cat i know he's probably looking for the grubs because i found plenty but this is not the place that you're going to dig and continue to do what you do so i had to run him off y'all <laughs>